Let's rank all the ACC starting quarterbacks. Almost every team in the ACC has named their starting quarterback besides North Carolina and California. So that made this ranking a little more difficult, but still got it figured out. I'm also adding Riley Leonard from Notre Dame in this ranking because if Notre Dame is in any conference, they're in the ACC. And there's a lot of new faces in the ACC as a starting quarterback, new coaches as well. So a uh, pretty interesting ranking. If you like these, I've also done Big 12, Big 10, and SEC. And my next one will be the G5 team. Starting at number 18, Nate Yarnell at Pittsburgh. He's entering his first year as a starter. He's been there three years, and in limited time last year, he threw for over 470 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Number 17, Ashton Daniels at Stanford. Daniels is going into his third year there, and he started in a majority of the games last season and struggled in a lot as well. 11 touchdowns, eight interceptions, but he's a good runner for Troy Taylor. And if he wanted to, he could just throw it up every play to Elik Ayo Manor on the outside. That is probably the best receiver in the ACC if I had to rank him. Number 16, Malik Murphy at Duke. He transfers from Texas. And last year when Quinn Ewers got injured, he came in for two games, threw 418 yards, three touchdowns, but three interceptions as well. And Manny Diaz is going to need him to be at least reliable at Duke this year. Uh, he's capable on the ground, but he never really showcases it. We'll see what he can do. Number 15, Anthony Calandria at Virginia. I'm a big fan of Calandria. He has toughness, he has heart, and he has some talent. Last year, he started in seven games, threw for almost, almost 2,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, but he did throw for nine interceptions. He's a capable runner and Tony Elliott is going to need a big year out of him to keep his job as the head coach. Number 14, Tyler Shuck, the new quarterback at Louisville. Uh, he's been in college for seven years, and his biggest battle has always been injuries. He's never played more than seven games in a season. He started off at Oregon, transferred to Texas Tech, and then this offseason transferred to Louisville, where he's going to be Jeff Brom's centerpiece. His best season was 2020, where he threw for 13 touchdowns and six interceptions that year. Number 13, Hank Bachmeyer at Wake Forest. He's going into his sixth year in college. His best season was 2021 at Boise State where he threw for 3,000 yards, 20 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Last year he was at Louisiana Tech where he was, he was okay. And this season he will be the starting quarterback for Wake Forest and Dave Clawson. Number 12, Thomas Castellanos at Boston College. Castellanos is one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch, and I'm so excited to watch him under Bill O'Brien this year in 2024. Bill O'Brien's the new coach at Boston College, so it should mesh together so well. Uh, last season he threw for 2,200 passing yards, 15 touchdowns, but he threw for 14 interceptions, which is way too high. Um, he did add 1,100 rushing yards and 13 rushing touchdowns on the ground. So he has so much talent, and I think Bill O'Brien Bill can uh, teach him and lead him in a way that he's always done with quarterbacks. Number 11, Chandler Rogers slash Fernando Mendoza at California. They are still both battling it out, and they have not named a starter yet. Fernando Mendoza was the starter la or the freshman last year at Cal, and he showed some promise in games such as Oregon State, USC, Washington State, and Stanford. Chandler Rogers comes over from North Texas, where he had an amazing year last year. Uh, over 3,000 yards, 29 touchdowns, five interceptions. I feel like Chandler Rogers will get the start, but I think both guys will have their moments. Number 10, Connor Harrell slash Max Johnson at North Carolina. These guys are still battling it out. No starter named uh, yet, just like California. Max Johnson has been around for a while. He played, at, he played at LSU for his first two years and had a really good season. His best season was in 2021, where he threw for 27 touchdowns and six interceptions. And he transferred to A&M, struggled with injuries there. Now he's at North Carolina battling it out with Connor Harrell. Harrell uh, was behind Drake May these last two years. He's going into his third year at North Carolina. And um, he had a really good bowl game, and many people believe him to be the future of the North Carolina program. Also, uh, second string quarterback from Arkansas, Jacoby Criswell, transferred back to North Carolina, but I don't think he's in the mix to start right now. And one of these two guys, I think, will both be good for North Carolina. It's just uh, all up to who they pick first. Number nine, Cade Klubnick at Clemson. 2023 was a weird year for Clemson and Cade Klubnick especially. He showed some good moments like he usually does, but the passing game just never clicked. He did throw for 2,900 yards, uh, but he only threw for 19 touchdowns and nine interceptions. He had four games where he did not throw a passing touchdown. And in Clemson, when you're going into a lot of big games, that's just not acceptable. And TCU's 
former offensive coordinator Garrett Riley is going into his second year at Clemson. Riley led the TCU Horned Frogs to the national championship in 2022, and this year he has a lot more weapons to work with, especially on the outside. Uh, they have tight end Jake Brenningstool coming back for another year, and five-star freshman Bryant Wesco should be the leader of that wide receiver group even in this freshman year. So that will help Cade Klubnick a lot this season. Number eight, Riley Leonard, the new quarterback at Notre Dame. His 2023 season got cut short at Duke because of an ankle injury at first and then turf toe, which he came out and said that that was worse than the ankle injury and kept him out longer. And he's still battling with some injuries, but he should be fine for when the season comes. And he was having a really good year last year. 2022 at Duke was his best season, throwing for almost 3,000 passing yards, 20 touchdowns, six interceptions. He also added 700 rushing yards and 13 more rushing touchdowns. And now he's at Notre Dame with the uh, coaching staff that he's never been a part of, Marcus Freeman, the head coach, and then offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock from LSU, the same offensive coordinator that helped Jaden Daniels win a Heisman last year at LSU. I think he can definitely get Riley Leonard to reach his full potential. Number seven, Kyle McCord, the new quarterback at Syracuse. He comes over from Ohio State, and McCord gets a lot of unfair hate and criticism, in my opinion. He uh, could have been better in a lot of big time moments last year, especially in that Michigan game. But as a season, as a whole, man, he had a really good season. 3,100 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, only six interceptions. That's good for any quarterback. And this year, he comes to Syracuse with Syracuse having a brand new coaching staff, so it will be different. He does have some weapons though, uh, most notably Justin Ross Simmons, the wide receiver from Colorado State. But super exciting for um, uh, Syracuse fans with Fran Brown and Kyle McCord coming over. Number six, Kyron Drones at Virginia Tech. Drones had a breakout season last year, started the third game and finished with over 2,000 passing yards. 17 touchdowns and only three interceptions. He also added 800 rushing yards and five more rushing touchdowns. Virginia Tech is in for a hell of a season with him as the starting quarterback. Number five, DJU at Florida State. The former Clemson Tiger comes back to the ACC to compete for a national championship at Florida State. Uh, at Oregon State last year, he had a really good season in my opinion. 2,700 passing yards, 21 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and he also added six more rushing touchdowns. A lot of people will always remember him as the quarterback at Clemson that failed and had to leave to um, have a good year at quarterback. And imagine if he shuts all that up with going to Florida State and winning the conference championship in the same conference that Clemson's in. October 5th is going to be insane. Clemson comes to Tallahassee, and that place is going to be wild. Number four, Preston Stone at SMU. Yeah, SMU is in the ACC now, if you didn't know that. Uh, he's coming off an amazing season there. Over 3,200 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, six interceptions. Last year, when SMU did play Power Four teams, they played Oklahoma and TCU, and uh, Preston Stone definitely struggled in those games. They scored 11 points versus Oklahoma and only 17 to a bad TCU team. So that is a concern, but I think once Stone and SMU get their footing early on, they're gonna be a problem even as early as this season. Number three, Grayson McCall, the new quarterback at NC State. He comes from Coastal Carolina, where he spent his whole career there. And last year was his worst year as a starter there. And it was played with injuries. He only played in six games, but he did not play well in those six games. But the three seasons as a starter before that, he totaled 77 touchdowns and eight interceptions in three seasons, which is just mind-blowing. NC State has been looking for a quarterback like him for a while, and I think they can definitely contend in the ACC and look for an ACC championship, especially when you have Kevin Concepcion, one of the best receivers in the ACC, to throw it to. At number two, this could be surprising for some people, Haynes King at Georgia Tech. King had a career year last season at Georgia Tech, led them to seven wins and a bowl victory. He had almost 3,000 passing yards, 27 touchdowns. He did throw 16 interceptions, which is insanely high and too high. He has to get those down to um, lead Georgia Tech further. But he also added almost 800 rushing yards and I want to say 10 rushing touchdowns. Just a hell of a season for him at Georgia Tech. And they have so much momentum going into 2024. The Tech schools, the Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech, they both have so much momentum going into next season. But at number one, pretty easily, Cam Ward, another new face in the ACC. He comes over from Washington State to be the guy at Miami. 
And at Washington State, his two seasons starting there, he combined to have 7,000 passing yards, uh, 50 touchdowns, and only 16 interceptions in total. This year, he comes to Miami, and he's used to an air raid offense at Washington State under Jake Dickert, but they don't even need him to do that this season with the group of really good backs they have, led by Oregon State transfer Damian Martinez, who is a beast. And then on the outside, they have Jacoby George coming back, Xavier Restrepo coming back, and then Sam Brown from Houston, who will all be crucial to leading Miami to their potential and maybe to the playoff. Yeah, guys, that is my ACC quarterback rankings. Comment what you disagree with below. Like and subscribe as well. Follow us on TikTok, 3 and Out CFB, and on Twitter, 3 and Out underscore CFB. Trying to grow both of those channels daily. Uh, next is my group of five quarterback rankings. I think I'll do like top 12 quarterbacks in the whole G5, and so that should be a fun one. Appreciate y'all for watching.